This episode is brought to you by Digium. Digium is the creators of Asterisk, the open source PBX. Visit them at digium.com, asterisk.org, and asteriskna.org. And also, BitGravity. BitGravity offers you content distribution needs for all of your online media. Visit them at bitgravity.com. And by Eden Soto. Eden Soto, the motion design artist. Visit Eden at EdenSoto.com. I'm Mark Spencer, and this is Astrocast. Hi, and welcome to episode 5 of Astrocast. I'm Tony. And I'm John. And in this episode, we're going to cover menuing systems inside of Asterisk and recording the prompts for those menus through the telephone. In conjunction with this new episode, we've also released our new website, which you can visit at astracast.com. We're also switching to a new, shorter format for our films. Hopefully, the Astracast episodes won't be any longer between 15 to 30 minutes long. We got the suggestion from Chris Wallace from BitGravity. We think we'll be able to distribute more videos in a shorter period of time in doing it this way, and instead of boring you with watching hour-long episodes covering things you may not care about, you can download and view only the episodes you want to see. So to get started, I'm going to pass over to John, and we're going to start the menuing system. All right. So um, I have a new install of Asterisk. Uh, it's running um, 1.6.0.1. I just installed it today, as you can see there. And now, um, so, what, so to start off, I guess the best thing to do would be to show how to make a recording through the telephone. I have two telephones here. I have extension 100 and extension 101. So um, I have this really simple dial plan right here. Um, the only thing that's maybe a little bit different here is I added a local dial extension, which makes it so I can call from this phone to this phone. Um, all right, so let's make a quick record context. And we've covered context in our past shows, so um, anyone can feel free to go back and look on what a context is in the previous shows. So the first thing I'm going to do is answer. Then I'm going to wait for two seconds. And the reason I wait is because if, uh, if the audio stream isn't completely set up, the waiting will allow the audio stream to actually finally get set up. Then I'm going to record. And I'm going to say I'm going to record in temp slash new greeting colon SLN. Now I'm choosing SLN um, because it, it, it's the suggested format by the Asterix community. You can also use ULA, WAVE, GSM, and if you have the codec, G729. But I'm choosing SLN, which stands for Sign Linear Format. All right, and then I need to add my record context to the default. I should show you that too before I do an asterisk reload. Um, all of my SIP clients are set up to use um, the context default. So that's how I know where they're going to land when they come into the extensions.com right here. All right, so I'm going to do asterisk minus R. I'm going to say module reload. So now when, I'm, when I dial 200, you can see the calls getting answered. And I can talk, and it's recording a file called New Greeting, which I'll show you in just a second. And to end the recording, I can just hang up the phone. Now, um, to show you, we have slash temp slash new greeting dot SLN. Now, let's say, obviously, a lot of people can't record this format on their, or listen to this format on their computers, but you, let's say you wanted to edit this and then bring it back into Asterisk. This is, this is kind of neat. Um, you can do asterisk minus R. You can say file convert slash temp slash new greeting dot sln you can say slash temp slash new greeting dot wave and what that did is it created a, a version of the file that can be open probably on most everyone's computer so and you can do the same thing like I said before GSM ULA any one of those you can do so that's a little side note so now we have our file so now let, let's build a directory, which I've already done. I've already recorded all these prompts, but I'll just show you the steps to get to that point. So I'm going to do make there um, slash var lib asterisk voice man, or I'm sorry, sounds. Then I made a directory called menu. 
Okay, and obviously it already exists because I created it and I recorded all of the prompts that I needed already. So let's say I wanted to use that as my greeting. Um, I'll just show you what I did here. Um, I have greeting, option one, option two, and vmail menu dot uh, sln. So I have all the, my stuff that I have, I already have all the stuff I need, but let's say if you wanted to change the, the file, so let's say you wanted to create one file called greeting and another file called option one, we'll edit slash etsy asterisk extensions.conf and you'll just change this file to whatever you want it to be. So that could be option one, option two, and just don't forget to do a reload um, after you change the file or module, actually, actually module reload now, they're depreciating uh, reload. Okay, so let's actually write our menuing system. So I'm choosing to make a new context called menu I'm also I'm also want to make this context so it answers for any. So what underscore x dot does it says any digits or any one digit followed by more digits or just one digit um, is valid in this. So it could be a ten digit number, eleven digit number, two digit number. It doesn't really matter. It'll just fall right into that particular uh, extension. So I'm going to answer. Then the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to do a wait, but this time I'm only going to do a wait for 1.5 seconds. I'm just doing that to show you that it, um, it's possible to use a non-integer, so a non-whole number as, as your wait. You could also say 0.5 or, or anything like that. Um, the next thing I'm going to use is read, and what read will do is that it actually waits for input, and I'm going to use the variable selected, and then I'm going to say menu slash greeting. And this is actually the audio file. So everything in asterisk is based on the first directory, var lib asterisk sounds. So that, um, so in the sounds directory, everything is based is based purely on that. By saying slash menu, what I'm doing is I'm saying please enter the menu directory and then play this file. By default, I think it goes with your language, which is English, en. Okay, and then I'm going to say one, which means I only want to accept one digit. So a lot of places when you call it'll say enter your like for example your credit card number followed by the pound sign. This will just when it gets the first digit it'll it'll fall through the, to the next thing. And the, in this case, the next thing is is where we start to check for input. And for that, I'm going to use a simple go to if. Selected is equal to 1. I'm going to go to 100, sorry, 100, or I'm going to go to 5, which is the next thing on the list. And to simplify this, I'm going to do a Control K, Control U, Control U, Control U, because I know I'm going to have three options. So I'm going to say 4, 5, 6, 2, 3. I'm going to say go to 200, go to 300, and you'll see what these mean in just a split second here. And this is actually 0. And then lastly, um, it's invalid. I don't. I didn't record an invalid file, so I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just going to say go to, to if they select the wrong thing. And then um, also here, I got to make this so it goes to six, and it goes to seven. So if if they don't press one, if the if the button selected isn't one, then go to five. If the button selected isn't uh, isn't two, then go to six. If the button is not if the button is not zero, then go to seven. So now we've covered all of our options. All right. So now I'm going to write my 100. Wow. 100, and then I'm going to say playback. <laughs> and you slash option one. So, and that's just, I think that one says, um, you've reached the sales department, please hold for a representative. And then 101, I'm going to say dial, and then I'm going to dial the phone sitting next to Tony. And lastly, I'm going to hang the call up. So, if Tony doesn't answer, it's going to go to hang up. Similarly, with... Um, with option 200, we're going to do basically the same thing. 
or, or exactly the same thing except we're going to play file option 2. With option 300, I'm going to do voicemail. I'm gonna say, I'll just say 300 SU. And we covered, I think we covered voicemail in another episode, yep. I think. So I don't need to go too much into that. Um, then I'm going to say 301, hang up. We actually oh. covered it in our last episode. So. Last episode? Yep. All right. Okay. Um, so now only thing I have left to do here is I need to set up, um, I need to set up the voicemail box. Oops. Okay, all the way down. And as you can see, I've already set one up because we've covered this before, so I'm just going to uncomment that here. And uh, so that's a simple voicemail box. Okay, so now that I have that set up, um, I still need to add it to my, uh, to my allowed context from default. And so I'm not going to, I'm going to put it at the end because this will accept any call that we put into it. So, so I, I can't dial a number that starts with a 1, and I can't dial 200, but any other number that I dial will go directly to um, the menu context. So, one more reload, and we should have it. So I'm just going to simply dial 999. Nine, nine, nine. Welcome to Astrocast. For sales, press 1. For support, press 2. Or press zero to leave a message in the general mailbox. All right, so I'm going to press one. Uh, you've reached the sales department. Please hold for the next representative. Now it's ringing Tony's phone. Go ahead and answer it. Hello, Astrocast. Okay, so there, there's that. And then, of course, it hung up. So now I'm going to call back in another time. And I'm just going to... And Welcome to Astrocast. Similarly with option sales, two. Press one. For support, press two. Oh. Support, or, I guess. You've reached the support department. Please hold for the next representative. It's going to ring Tony again. Astrocast support. <laughs> okay. And now I'm going to dial one more time. Welcome to Astrocast. I'm going to dial zero. And the one thing I didn't do is, you know, that was needed. It just beeped. So what we need to do is actually play a voicemail greeting beforehand. Well, so, so what we can do is, no, normally what we've done is we've set the voicemail box up with, uh, with an inbox greeting. You know, you, you dial 500, you press option 0, and then it says record your unavailable message and all this. Well, with options SU, it expects us to put a voicemail box, uh, or expects us, us to put a message in before that. So um, let me just, I don't remember the uh, audio name of the audio file that I recorded. So let me, uh, and it's Vmail v menu. So now I'm going to go back into the extensions.com and I'm going to say okay so let's just I'll just show you the difference here so now I'm going to dial I'm going to hit option zero. For sales, press, you've reached the general voice mailbox. After the tone, please record a message, then press the pound sign. So there, we were able to configure the voice mailbox without actually having to uh, um, record, go into the voice mailbox and set it up. And you can also get these recorded by third-party companies or yourself using other formats such as like Audacity. You can record all your prompts ahead of time in WAV format and then use the option of WAV instead of SLN in your menuing system. Mm -hmm. Or you can also use the asterisk command console or the console to convert those to SLN if you want to do that. That's correct? correct. Yep, yep. You can use that file convert command. Now, one other, one other thing, um, if, if you think about it, both of those lines rang Tony's phone. So, you know, Tony wouldn't know how to answer the phone um, if, if, you know, if, if, whether it was a sales call or a support call. Well, we can, we can remedy that by adding set caller ID name equal, and I could say sales, 
and then I gotta increment these by one and I will do the same thing for support now, obviously you won't be able to see this at home but it gives you the general idea of what we're trying to do so and I don't need to do that on voicemail obviously but you, you I guess you will be able to see that when I dial here should say sales if caller ID name is enabled yep. on that phone. And it just says sales. So, so basically what, what that enables us to do is, uh, is so Tony can know how to answer the phone when somebody calls it. And this is great for small businesses who want to look big. Yep. I actually work at a company right now where we have multiple website businesses and we all have one gentleman that handles all the calls for those, whether it's sales or support. And, uh, we're setting this up and we're going to implement this so that when that phone rings, he can see which business name is calling and for what reason. So he can see it as company A, sales, company A, support, company B, sales, company B, support. And we can show that just by typing that into our uh, yep. show caller ID name. Yep. And w the one thing I, I should say is it, is it does override the normal caller ID name that's calling you. Um, this is sort of a, a, a quick uh, a quick hack. I mean, we, we could concatenate the variables and things like that, but the thing is, is the phone might only support so many characters. So mm -hmm. um, we just, you know, just override what the caller ID name is so that way you know how to answer the phone. Yep. So I think that covers everything that I was going to show. Absolutely. Okay. So we'd also like to uh, give a little heads up that we do have Astrocast t-shirts still available for sale. You can go to astrocast.com and click on the link at the top that says show your support, which we would love you to do. And the shirts are $20 plus shipping and handling. The reason they're so expensive is because we can't afford to buy them in mass quantities. So <laughs> that's about the cheapest we can sell them. Um, we make $2 a shirt. So really you're helping us out by doing that. We don't really make any money at all. But they're $20 plus shipping and handling. We have on the website right now, it looks like medium, large, extra large, and double extra large, um, which you can buy all online. Um, or you can email me at tony at astrocast.com if you don't want to go through the website to buy them. Um, we're also taking uh, sponsorships. As mentioned earlier, right now we have Digium, uh, Bitgravity, and then Eden Soda, who are all sponsors. If you'd like to uh, see your product on our show or have us do a review of your product, please email me or John at tony at astrocast.com or john at astrocast.com. We'd love to bring any of your products on here and we'll do a review and a setup of them and let people know what we truly think about it. Um, whether you're a sponsor of ours or not, we'll truly let you know what we think of the product. Um, and I think that is going to cover it for this episode. Uh, before we go, we're going to give you a quick demo reel here of Eden Soto, the gentleman who made the intros, lower thirds, and uh, credit beds for our show. So for episode five of Astrocast, I'm Tony. And I'm John. And we'll see you next time.